Hello again and welcome back to the channel or welcome to the channel for the first time. Today I'm going to have a more entertainment, more fandom menace based topic and I'm doing this because I've been kind of hitting hard on the Groiper War trying to get all the kind of big juicy topics that I want to cover as far as that shit goes and you know things we can learn from the past, things we can mo learn moving forward. But I want to talk about some entertainment for a little bit, just to, you know, kind of change it up, give it a little spice. Um, so yeah, the topic of today's video is what the replacement of woke entertainment will be and how it will not be good. During this video, I'm still a little under the weather and uh, I hope to be recovered by tomorrow so my voice will sound normal and all that. And in the meantime, I've been getting lots of great engagement on my channel. I hope that some people will return for this video. So be sure to leave a like, leave a comment. All the metrics help, even the dislikes. So screw you guys. <laughs> screw you wignats. Fucking that shit helps regardless. I, yeah. So let's move forward into the topic. Now, woke entertainment on its own will be phased out by the next decade. And I can tell that this is merely just a product of the current year and the you know ongoing social justice narrative that was peddled primarily during the Obama administration and then spiraled out of control from the beginning of the Trump administration till now. Um, th this is just part of the culture war at large, having woke entertainment. And we've had certain woke films in the past, uh, Pleasantville, comes to mind as being one of these kind of uh, subversive woke movies. If you've ever seen the the Black Pill commentary by Devin Stack on his channel Black Pilled, I will link that in the description for you because it is really kind of surprising how they just snuck that one under. But for most people, when they view woke entertainment, the, the big um, inciting incident is the 2016 Ghostbusters reboot starring Kristen Wiig, Melissa McCarthy, uh, that unfunny bitch Kate McKinnon from fucking SNL, and Leslie Jones, who uh, got into a whole bunch of Twitter fights as a result of, I don't even remember what it was, I think it was like 4chan going after her for the fucking Ghostbusters, and it was incredibly funny shit. If not, I will have the, the origins of that in the description, because it is relevant in the sense that it was the first time that not only do we have a woke reboot of an existing property, but we also had, you know, the creators, the, the cast, the crew actively going out against the audience that they were seeking to maintain so that the franchise could stay afloat into further sequels. And this was amazing to me at the time because... <coughs> I had never seen such open, brazen attacks on the people that you're trying to cater to, to come and enjoy your product. <laughs> and it obviously resulted in a giant box office bomb. You can now find that film in the bargain bin section at any department store. And as a result of the backlash, we now have a brand new Ghostbusters sequel coming out next year, starring Bill Murray, starring Dan Aykroyd, starring Ernie Hudson, with Paul Rudd and a couple other people as the newbies, and what will probably feature a more befitting tribute to Egon Spengler, played by Harold Ramis, who's no longer with us, unfortunately. And it will be directed by Jason Reitman, the son of Ghostbusters director Ivan Reitman, and will more than likely stick towards the, the vision of Ghostbusters 3. And so we have had other, you know, kind of woke reboots, more uh, more woke movies. Get Out is a really big one that I think was definitely a woke-inspired horror film. Um, but that was successful. Sorry, there, there have been so many woke reboots that I'm unfortunately probably going to have to list them all through Wikipedia entries, in the sources, so I can uh, move on with this commentary. But one that really struck a nerve with me, and it wasn't even that woke, was the failure of Solo A Star Wars Story. 
Yes, it had L337. Yes, it had ugly aliens. Yes, it had fucking, you know, a more diverse cast, quote unquote. But what it didn't really have was the socio-political narrative of The Last Jedi. Yet that movie and its, you know, overt wokeness helped to make Solo be the first Star Wars bomb. And it was because people were very upset about The Last Jedi and how that movie kind of ruined the franchise. Although, in my opinion, The Force Awakens ruined the franchise first. It's just, it took the second film for people to realize, oh, they they have no idea what they're doing and this is going nowhere. And so the, the future installments, the future sequels, the future spinoffs would be affected as a result of The Last Jedi's kind of trolloping of the Star Wars franchise under its cloven hoofs. And now we have felt the results. And we have now with Terminator Dark Fate, the, the film that has kind of inspired this commentary, as a result of its $100 million loss and $29 million domestic gross, the obvious decline of woke entertainment. And we have the Charlie's Angels reboot coming up next. I assume that will also, you know, share a similar fate in that it will not be very popular. Or just outright be lambasted by everybody. And we now are in this world where we have the decline of woke entertainment. And it's great. And we need to keep the pressure up as the fandom menace, as you know, sort of dissidents in entertainment. We need to let these people know that we do not want their woke shit. However, the one company that I think will continue to peddle wokeness well and beyond its time is Disney and the Walt Disney Motion Picture Company. Why do I say this? One, because they're extremely big. And two, because they can cushion the blow of a, you know, of a giant box office bomb. You know, Solo was surrounded by Avengers Infinity War and, yeah, Avengers Infinity War. A $2 billion gross kind of shelters the $300 million gross of Solo A Star Wars Story. So it's kind of not a loss for Disney, but it is a loss for Lucasfilm as it is the first giant blemish on their box office success as a company. And yet we have an issue. If all of these other companies are not going to be able to handle the woke entertainment and its decline and its, you know, absolute financial failure, what will replace it? What will be the thing that Hollywood looks to, you know, to kind of emulate and, and develop? And while shared universes is a great theory, I have a, a smarter, more research theory, and that is copy-paste entertainment. We have seen throughout the past two decades, you know, very quickly made reboots, remakes, soft reboots of franchises that were not done with that long ago. You know, when the Friday the 13th remake came out in 2009, the last film to feature Jason was Freddy vs. Jason, which was kind of a failure. And then we had either in 2000 or 2001, Jason X, which is the Jason in Space movie. And that was an even bigger failure. And so with this copy-paste entertainment, we are going to see franchises that, you know, they basically were not totally fucked like five years ago. And then they made one movie that didn't do well and they didn't want to continue with a sequel, but instead they'll be like, this franchise has the potential to make money, so therefore we are going to soft reboot it. What is the big example of a soft reboot in the modern cinematic landscape, you ask? Very simple. Star Wars The Force Awakens. Why do I say this? It is a cut-and-paste reboot of Star Wars Episode Four: New Hope with the Yoda scene of Star Wars Episode Five at the very end to be replaced with Rey and Luke for Luke and Yoda. And because that film made $2.1 billion, we are going to see a lot of soft reboots 
of beloved franchises. I believe that the Predator that came out last year is indeed in itself a soft reboot and that it takes, you know, Predator 1, Predator 2 and makes that part of its mythos but kind of ignores Predators, which is, in my opinion, a superior film to the Shane Black Predator, you know, from a guy who should have fucking known better as he was the rewrites guy for the Predator, and he did a lot of punch-up, you know? I'm pretty sure he even did the I ain't got time to bleed line on set with Jesse Ventura. But this kind of copy-paste entertainment is going to be ubiquitous. It is going to fill the landscape of Hollywood. And as a result, especially if they don't do well, if they turn off the audience, it will cause a steep decline in audience turnout. We are going to see more streaming platforms be the norm. We are going to see the loss of, you know, our great cinema chains, our our great movie theaters. You know, some of these more historical ones are going to have to be preserved as fucking museums at a certain point. Because no one will understand... You know, if, if it gets bad, Generation Alpha Alpha will not understand what a fucking movie theater is. And let me tell you, I do not want to live in that world, okay? It, it sounds fucking disgusting to where all we do with our time and our hobbies is sit indoors and not engage and, you know, talk to each other through fucking phones. And yeah, I sound like a boomer right now, but... You know, to me, the the magic of going to the movies is something that I truly cherish as a filmmaker and as a human being, because it is something that, to me, is indescribable when, you know, I sit down for a movie and I really engage with the story and the uh, the acting and the dialogue and the jokes and and the flow of the narrative. And what can we do about this, you ask? As we kind of wrap up this commentary, very simple. It will be incredibly imperative for us to spot and avoid the soft reboots, the the copy-paste entertainment, because they are counting on us to just show up and eat the slop. And if we don't just consume product and then get excited for new product, they will not make this. And... Yeah, we can't convince everybody, but the giant decline will cause, you know, major fallout for the studios, major financial loss for the studios. They will then invest in the streaming shit. And if they try to pull this shit on streaming as well, avoid it. It is absolutely important to avoid a soft reboot on a streaming service. Because let me tell you, these streaming services are going to be big for a little while. They're not going to fall overnight. And we need to show, you know, Apple, Disney, Warner Brothers, Universal, that you can't just have your own streaming service and expect everyone to pay for all of them at once. You know, only a finite amount of people will be able to afford, what was it, like the $90 bill that it would cost in total to get Netflix, Hulu, Peacock, Disney+, Plus, HBO Max, yada, yada, CBS, go discovery or whatever. And this is not the entertainment landscape we wanted. You know, all most of us wanted were just good movies, you know, good TV shows, good video games, good comics, good fucking animated things, animated features. And instead now we are getting the slop. We are getting the leftovers. We're getting the, the moldy food. And they think we are just pigs in a farmhouse ready to eat the slop. And we got to show them that we are more sophisticated, more educated, and more informed on the entertainment that we consume. You know, you cannot break down movies by demographics. And to kind of tie it back to New Hollywood before I wrap it up entirely, you know, this is the same kind of landscape that created people like Steven Spielberg, like Martin Scorsese, like George Lucas, Francis Ford Coppola, Brian De Palma. John Milieu, you know, this is the new Hollywood dynamic that will be created if these studios fail, you know, if the studio system fails, then we will see the rise of the artist again. I don't think a lot of those guys will be old enough to see it happen, but you know, the, the pioneering that they all did for the art of cinema, 
will be incredibly respected by this new crop of filmmakers and producers because they wanted this in the first place. There are so many young independent filmmakers out there who want the ability to tell a, tell a good story and have an audience for it. And yet they are shunned by this new studio system of mega multi-million dollar corporations. And why? It's because you don't have a brand behind you. But we need to show the studio system that you don't need a brand at the end of the day. All you need is a good story and a willingness for the audience to go watch it. And so I end on this to all the studios out there who are going to just replace woke entertainment with copy paste entertainment. Tread lightly because if we can see it, we will not choose to go to the theaters.